Only six verses in this in this chapter. The Lord, let me just go to the King James Version, is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now listen to this quickly. The, what was man's first enemy? Think about it. God created man in his image and in his likeness. Man was in this perfect place. There was a lot of trees that he could eat of. Only one God said, don't get involved in that one. What was, think about this quickly. What was man's, what was the first enemy? The boy. What's the enemy? The deceiver. Think, 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 think. Don't mooi. Kom, jylle bring jylle brein saam met jylle moskel. Think about it. God said to Adam, Adam, if you eat of this tree, you will die. So what was the first enemy? Not eating of the tree, not falling for the temptation of the devil, the, 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 the cataclysmic of evil, that sounds fine, of your decision is dead, you will die. It's man's enemy. And I tell you what, ever since then, people are scared of dying. I remember Tony Boki's mom in our church in Palamora. She wasn't actually in our church, did Tony, but um, she was on a deathbed and and the doctor said she won't make it through the night. So me not being a pastor, I don't love hospitals. The only time you find me in a hospital is if I'm there. Because of myself. But I don't love, I'm not a pastor. I don't love sitting in, I don't love drinking coffee and tiri tiri chup, tra pra, quickies and quickies. That's not my gifting. But then Boki asked me, can you come and pray for my mom? She's dying. And I was irritated. First of all, I had to get out of my house, get into the car, go to the hospital, pray for it. It's not even my church. So as I was driving there, it wasn't far, but the border is a kind door, it didn't take me a long time. Walked into the hospital, walked into the room, Tani Boki met me, and it was only the three of us in the room. Tani Boki's mom already, her eyes already looked look, look like they were broken. You cannot bring Tofe to not Ursi. And she was really fighting for her life. And I realized she don't want to die. She don't want to die. She was afraid of dying. She believed that Jesus is the Son of God. And in my not being all too pastoral at that moment, I bent over to her and I said, Omar, can you hear me? And with her last breath, she just shook her head. I said, do you want to live or do you want to die? And with I think it was the last word she said. Live. Live. I said, then in the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke the spirit of death over your life. Live. And I walked out white and Iboki, like a dog, and Iboki was offended. You can ask, you can phone her. She's still a good friend to us. She was offended because how can you talk to my mom like that in her final moments? The next morning, the tiny didn't die. And the day after that, she didn't die. And a week after that, she didn't die. And a month after that, she didn't die. A couple of years after that, she decided now it's time to go. <laughs> and this day, Boki invited us for, she made the nicest oxtail with dumplings. And she would treat us once a year, inviting us for, then I'm a pastor. Dan doen ek huisbesoek met groot graagte. And Tony Boki's mom was with us at the, at the table and she said, Donnie, did you see that person that was in the room with us? I said, oh my, it was that Tony Boki. She said, no, there was another person dressed in black sure. in the room. Sure. And he sat right behind the door. I said, no, I didn't see him. She said, and when you said, I rebuke the spirit of death, she said, I had seen Afrikaans, to vip by yourself. I stand up and I freak in the camera. Ready to take her? She feared to die. You know what? When she encountered grace in that time of her life, she couldn't wait to say goodbye to this world and step into eternity. There was a difference between the two 
scenarios, the one where she didn't want to die because she was conscious of maybe when I die, I will go to hell. But the moment God has set her free and she got into the gospel of grace, in her late 80s, she encountered stepping out of this dimension into eternity. And in her life, death was placed under the feet of Jesus. Amen. Yeah. So, in, even in Donnie from Wake's life, you can ask the shy. Death is placed under the feet of Jesus. I am not scared of dying. Because I know Amen. death cannot hold me down. Amen. So the psalmist writes this in the context of the fall of man, in the context of the result of Adam's choice. If you eat of this tree, you will die. What did the devil say to him? You will certainly not die. So the enemy came. The enemy wasn't the devil. The enemy was death. The enemy was not being in the presence of the tree of life. I tell you what, you can be in the presence of God. In the middle of hell and you'll be fine. Or you can be in a calmest place. Meditating in karma and all his knocks that you do. The devil is not even there. But without the tree of life available in your life, you're in a dangerous place. So David wrote the song. That's what I was thinking about while I was driving and I said to Gaino, what's up this title? Because it's not legal to text while you drive. Yeah. So once I upheld the law, <laughs> I got it right. The last enemy. David said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I go from Afrikaans, the year is my herder, my niks al my ontbreek nie. I say my niks al ooit breek nie. He never, he never, he never, you know what, this is good two shoot thing that we preach in the church, that the moment you become a child of God, everything will just be 100% in your life, you will never fall sick, you will never need to be comforted, you will never lose a loved one, you will, everything will just be fine, and a lot of people jump into Christ because they believe that is, that is the lotto of a nice life on this side of the grave. You've won the lotto when you want Christ. He tell you something, Jesus isn't interested in this small moment of time in comparison to the interest that he's got in eternity with you. So think about this. He made me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me into paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I read, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Stick a bit down. Let's connect this to, it's maybe not doctrinally correct, but let's just do this for this morning. There was a shadow which wasn't the thing to come. The shadow of presenting sacrifices because of the enemy, death. The wages of sin is death. So imagine David walking with a little lamb to be slaughtered in the presence of God for the mistakes he made. And he walks in the shadow of the fact that he's supposed to die because of the law. I will fear no evil. So who's the enemy in this? Evil is on the one side, but death is here, and there's a shadow. I want you to see this picture with me. Here, help us all. David, though I walk in an old covenant that is just a shadow, of the result of Adam's mistake. I'll fear no evil. Why? Why? Why didn't David fear death? Think about this. Verse 
see. You restore my soul. Where is sin consciousness? In your mind, which is the soul dimension. Amen? So we are we sin conscious. I know I made a mistake. It's Esau. And I saw, you restore my soul. Let's make a new covenant. You renew my mind. Yeah. You leadeth me in paths of righteousness. Meaning, every time you bring me back to a place in my mind where you tell me, David, you are in right standing with me. I mean, they had to see something about Jesus being crucified and resurrected. You've been placed in right standing with me, David. For my name's sake, not for your name's sake, not for your good works. My name's sake, David. And if you walk in this valley where the shadow of the enemy is, you will fear no evil. Why? Why? Think about it. For you are with me. Let me close with this. Mario Morello was a, a minister that was invited to, to compare powers with a male witch that was in witchcraft many years back. And Mario Morello as a young believer is actually, I think he was, I don't know if he was Carmen, the singer's pastor, or he was Carmen's brother. But Mario... Uh, when he was invited, he said, I'm not going to accept this invitation from the switch. Because he said, Lord, what can I, I don't want to mix with that devil guy. And he took the invitation and he threw it away. And Holy Spirit said to him, Mario, if you don't go, who's going to go? So this guy accepted the invitation going to visit this male witch, warlock, whatever he was. And he was invited into his house and all the things that they used in the occult was in this, represented in this guy's house and he said he sat him down and he gave him a thick book with newspaper articles and he said to him I've killed this woman with AIDS I've killed that guy with cancer I've caused that natural disaster and he bragged about the things that he controlled in this dimension and he threw that book in arrogance into Mario's lap and said what can your God do to compete to this. The average Christian can't even pray for a headache. We pray for a headache, it's turned into a migraine. You pray for a fly, it becomes a bat. Come on, the average Christian. Come on, let's be honest with ourselves this morning. So he sat there and this guy that is in the cult operated in the spiritual realm and he did incredible things that Mario in his early years of ministry couldn't compare with. As if, if, if my memory serves me right, he hasn't even seen a miracle in his ministry update when he prayed for somebody to be healed. And in a moment, he see, he see, he was he was actually, without words, how can I compare with this? He's looking through the pages of all the things this guy has done with, the, with these demonic powers. And that, that just irritates the living day. That's out of me. That the body of Jesus Christ don't operate in this. In the power of God. Yeah. That's why young children run to the to Satanism because they don't see the power of God in the church. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, come on. Amen. I don't want to make you sin conscious. I want to make you Christ conscious. Amen. So he sat there and he, and, 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 and he meditated for a second or two. He said, Lord, what can I answer this guy? And then the one enemy that that guy hasn't got control over is the day that he will die. They, he will exhale his last breath. And he said to this guy, he said, you know what? One day, all these demons that you believe you control now, when you are on your deathbed and you're dying, what are you going to tell them in that moment? He said, but I can tell you what I can tell them when they knock on my door, when I'm on my deathbed, and they want to drag my soul to hell. I will tell them, I am bought with the blood of Jesus Christ. Let me go. He said that guy got angry. Threw him out of the chair and threw him out of his house. And Mario, as he walked away, he turned around and said, next time think twice before you mess with a man of God. Amen. But listen, think about this church. There is one fear in the major, in the earth, there is one major fear in every person's life. It's the fear of dying. No matter what tribe, tongue, or nation, or where you are, 
Why are people scared of farm murders? Fear of dying. Why do you wear a safety belt? Want jy met jou tanden beskerm. Want tanden het in a dashboard like jy mooi nie. That's fear. How many things we do out of a fear of dying? How many eating habits we've got out of a fear of dying? And Jesus is victorious. See that right under the Father waiting for death, the last enemy, to be made his footstool in your life. Let me tell you what it is. It's not just you living in a place where you're not scared of dying. It is right at the end when God's going to raise the dead in the second coming. Now church, I, imagine this. Every single person that believed that they, even believers that got cremated and they had their ashes scattered over the Drakensberg or even in the Grand Canyon or even in the ocean. Or people that passed away and they and and they drowned in the ocean and they became vegetation in the ocean. Or the Moise. Those that were buried in the earth. Those that were burned. Those that died in the sea. Any form of death available on this planet that took a life will one day have to give it back. The wind will return he's dead and the ocean will return it's dead and the ground will return it's dead because there's a day that a trumpet will sound in the second coming of Jesus Christ and every person you can go read that in 1 Corinthians 15 every person that died in him will be in a moment raised from the dead the lost enemy has not, yes he was defeated on the cross but that moment where Jesus will put his feet back on this specific planet and the dead that died in Christ will be raised with a new glorified body and those that in that moment didn't die, in a twinkling of an eye your physical body as you know it, if it happens right now, and you've got arthritis, you will say bye to Arthur and to writers. <laughs> because you will have a glorified body in a moment of time. Glory. You will be restored to the perfect image of the one seated at the right hand of the Father. Yes. Thank you. Give him a praise. Yes. Give him a good praise. Yes. So good couldn't hold him down. Yeah. Now I said, I, I close with Mario Marilla's story. But let me close with Lazarus' story. I preached that a couple of weeks way back. Okay. Remember that one? Yes. Where Lazarus died and he was dead for how many days? Three. Three. And he already started decomposing. Think about this church. And Jesus said to her, to his sister, your brother will be raised. And she said, I know. That in the last day, in the resurrection, he will be raised. Jesus said, hey, <laughs> woman, I am the resurrection and the life. Yo, amen. So, the one that is seated at the right hand of the Father, waiting for the last enemy to be placed under his foot, he is called the resurrection and the life. You see the, the, the sequence. It, first, resurrection in life. Are you with me? Yes. He doesn't say, I am called the life and the resurrection. Meaning that you lived before you were raised. No, no, no. You will actually live the day after you've been raised from the dead. And to prove to them that he was the resurrection and the life. In the dispensation of the shadow and the sacrifices and everything they needed to do in order for their conscience to be clear because of all the sins they committed. He said, roll away the stone. And he spoke into death. He didn't even have the keys of death at that moment. Yet he took it when he was raised from the dead. He spoke in death. He said, Lazarus, come forth. 
that voice went right into the pit of Hades where everybody was and he listened to that voice and he said somebody's calling me I need to go and he was out of there his body was wrapped up in cloths he didn't have a Nike look at a Nike t-shirt and Nike tackies he was wrapped up in and placed in a place where you can't actually you can't actually just go in there you need to be carried into it he, he Jesus didn't say go carry him out he said Lazarus come out there's so much life there's so much life in the resurrection and the life that when he speaks <coughs> even if you are in the most difficult place wrapped up in a in cloths you will just respond to that voice and you will come out he didn't come out unwrapped. He came out wrapped. And he said to those standing around, and tie. Mark die doeke los. Van a korps wat al begin front het. So I got good news for you. I don't know who's going to win the next election. And I don't know if the people that will win the next election will keep to their promises. And I don't know if I will see 2025 or I, I don't know how long or but one thing I can promise you there will be a day when that voice will speak again Amen. and every believer that died in him scripture makes it clear those that died in him suddenly Hopefully somebody's not at your grave at that moment putting flowers, remembering you. Or thanking God that you're no longer there. Because the graves will open wide. And you say, Donnie, but if people are cremated and the ashes are scattered in the wind, how can God get a body out of that let me tell you something you take one of those pieces of ash you put them under a microscope and you take a single sperm and you'll find out that the ash is still way bigger than the sperm God made you out of a single sperm He can recall anything back into existence and He's going to do that so I don't care in the back of my mind you see sin consciousness is not being conscious of the fact that I I used a bad word when I injured myself. Or I lost my temper when somebody said this. Or I've seen something that I wasn't supposed to look at. Or I said something I wasn't supposed to say. Or I was eating bacon or I shaved my beard or whatever law you broke. Sin consciousness, oh my goodness, I stole a cookie out of the cookie jar. Sin consciousness was the fact that people died because of Adam's decision. Now my conscience is cleared from that knowing that I cannot die Amen. ever because yes his body can pass on but he will raise me from the dead I've got that hope in me that as he is I am I'm already like that it's already in my DNA but there will be a time that this earth will be governed by the body of Jesus Christ people with a reason Erected body. Amen. Amen. Are you fine with that? Amen. Are you fine with that? Does it make sense? Yes. Give God a praise. Woo!